we have uh, the distinct pleasure of uh, a presentation by someone who has made a name for himself. Um, Paul Jenkins is uh, part of the Matelaha Coalition and a moving force with the Surfrider Foundation, and he's going to give us a small but very significant and powerful presentation. Paul, thanks for being here. So this evening I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, or a lot, about the Ventura River watershed and how important having a land conservancy like the Ventura Hillside Conservancy is in the scheme of things. And I think uh, there's a lot of information here. I'm going to go fairly quickly. I've been uh, working with the Surfrider Foundation now for about 17 years here in Ventura. We're part of this West Coast Ecosystem-Based Management Network. There's a network of projects on the West Coast, and the Ventura River is one of those. We're talking about ecosystem-based management. And ecosystem-based management is an integrated approach to management that in includes the entire ecosystem, including humans, the impact of humans on those systems. And that's really the key to this approach to management. EBM originally came from these Ocean Commission reports. And, uh, and they both came up with the same conclusion that our coasts and oceans are in crisis. And I'll talk more about crisis in a minute, but whole host of issues. Heard of non-point source pollution. There's dead zones, various places throughout the ocean. Uh, we've got invasive species in the ocean and on land. You know, this tremendous sprawl problem, of course, we're familiar with this in Southern California. And how we've developed and tried to move right up to the very edge and actually build houses on the beach uh, it's killing, it's killing our ocean, it's killing our beaches. I took this picture about three years ago on the corner of California and Thompson. Uh, you know, what's he trying to say? It's a crisis, there's a crisis coming. This is kind of like us at Surfrider, we're like, look at the ocean, look what's happening. Nobody really sees it until it's too late. This is, this is the tsunami in Japan. This is really important because J Japan has spent literally billions, trillions of dollars armoring their coast. They have poured concrete up and down every river, every beach throughout the whole nation, and they're still at it. Much of it in the name of tsunami protection. And then you can see what happens when the real tsunami hits. Uh, what this has done is enable people to live right next to the edge, move in right next to the coast, and it puts people in harm's way. This stormwater permit in Ventura County was also seen as a crisis. This was a crisis of management. This was a crisis for our local governments. And a tremendous amount of effort was put in by our local uh, government agencies in trying to figure out what to do with this new permit that was going to regulate the existing infrastructure, the storm drains that are delivering all that water to the coast. There's a whole host of issues associated with stormwater. And all of these things, from bike paths to uh, ocean illness, um, you know, I quoted our natural community in there because that was something that our community found as a priority in our 2005 general plan here in the city of Ventura. And I don't think that the uh, planners were able to see that this was all part of the same problem and trying to make it go away and unregulate it didn't necessarily solve it. In the end, the outcome was this LID. Anybody know what LID is? Low impact, Low impact development. Low impact development. Great. That, this, is a, this is a technique for trying to begin to capture stormwater on properties rather than flushing it into the ocean. Um, LID perhaps is part of EBM, part of this ecosystem management approach. Um, but really what we need is integration. We need integration of all of these. If you just go about trying to deal with stormwater, you miss out on all the multiple opportunities that come from integrated projects. Uh -oh. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Ventura River watershed. This is a great aerial photo that I like to use that really shows the connection between the coast and the mountains that are just 15 miles away up above Ojai. Uh, this is a map of our watershed, and I think probably everybody in this room by now is familiar with the term watershed. Anybody not heard of a watershed? Of course not. 
that's because I went out and started doing presentations. I started asking people, what is a watershed? What is a watershed? Uh. Is it like a barrel that collects water from your gutters? That's a good question. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I don't really know a lot about water. We must recognize the severity of this crisis that we face. So today, I'm signing an executive order proclaiming a statewide drought. Everything that we as humans do on land ultimately impacts our coasts and our beaches. You know, when people turn on their, their kitchen sink, they don't really think on a day-to-day -day basis, where's that water coming from? A lot of people in this community don't realize that the river used to flow year-round. If we don't move quickly, the loss will be tremendous. Fires, yeah, big ones, big ones coming. So when it burns, it's going to go big. What are you going to do? Let it burn. Why they build more houses for? We have already a water problem. It's ludicrous to even consider the city of Ventura and the Ventura River watershed area connecting to state water. As I got older, I realized, wait, I've been surfing in this for the last 20 years. We have an intact river. It's not dead yet. Worst case scenario, theoretically, they could take water out of the ocean. At some point, I think we all need to come together to solve some of the problems that we're facing. Definitely have to uh, appreciate the work of Rich Reed and everybody that contributed to this film. I think a lot of you have seen this film. Uh, really happy to announce that it's been, um, it's been accepted by PBS and will be airing nationwide in, in the fall. Uh, in, in the Ventura River watershed, we have to realize that all of our water comes from the water cycle. It's all coming from the rain that falls within the watershed. And uh, how we store that water and how we manage that water is really critical to the sustainability and the health of the community. Um, you know, our water, we have uh, uh, Lake Casitas, obviously, a surface water storage, which is a very large amount of water that's stored there. But we also have some groundwater basins within the watershed where water naturally percolates into the ground, and that is also available for, for use. Um, this is a very complicated uh, flow, flow chart that I'm not going to try and explain right now, but the, the real message here is that each one of these red arrows here is a different water agency. And that's only a few of them. There's a whole bunch of smaller water agencies and over 200 active wells within those groundwater basins that I just spoke about. So the fact that we don't have a single overarching uh, plan or agency dealing with our water is a critical issue. Uh, you might have seen in the news, uh, there's a group in Ojai that's actually trying to uh, take control of their water supply. The Golden State Water is a, a national corporation that uh, has their water rights in Ojai. So rates are going up. They're getting less and less uh, money invested in their infrastructure, and they're really concerned. Uh, how much water is used and where it goes? Nobody really knows this. I fabricated this uh, pie chart from information taken from uh, the Casitas Water District and kind of extrapolating some things. But two thirds of the water going to agriculture, that's probably consistent with water use uh, in the state of California. Um, Looking at the hydrology of the river, you can see that we have a very shallow aquifer, a very shallow groundwater basin down the main stem of the Ventura River. And uh, the groundwater and the surface water are directly connected. The state of California doesn't still, still doesn't really fully legally uh, recognize that. So th that is an issue for water management. Um, one of the impacts that you have here is 
Uh, you know, we have our steelhead, our endangered species. This is in one of the pools on the Ojai uh, uh, Ventura River Preserve. And this time of year, the river's flowing, that pool's beautiful. Go up there a month from now, it starts looking like that. You know, people don't realize the river used to flow year round. Uh, but once you stick those straws in and start sucking the water out, this is the result, and we're seeing endangered species drying up on the banks of the Ventura River. Uh, land use. Now, this is probably very pertinent to uh, uh, a land conservancy. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, the quote up here, all land developed or not is in a watershed. So we have to realize that everything that goes on within the watershed is, is connected. And I think this is a great graphic. This is from the Lower Ventura River Parkway plan um, that is uh, available now if you're interested in, in seeing this document. We can make it available to you. Um, but you can see here the river running right up the middle and all the j adjacent land, the, the, the habitats on the hillsides and, and the city, the urban areas. Um, you know, looking at different land uses, obviously we have highly urbanized area in the city. We got golf courses. Golf courses use water. Um, rows and rows of uh, citrus and avocados up in Ojai. We have abandoned industrial facilities. Uh, this is the Ojai Quarry. We've got mining in the Ventura River watershed. And we've got things like this, uh, cattle and horses. You know, all of these things have an impact on water quality. And water quality is very important when this is your drinking water supply. And part of the result that we're seeing from those cows and horses is, is algae growing in the Ventura River, especially as the flows drop. Ventura River is listed as impaired by the EPA for algae. And so there's uh, what's called a TMDL, a total maximum daily load, uh, regulatory process in the works right now to try and deal with this algae problem in the, in the river. You know, it's funny, Surfrider started stenciling storm drains in the city of Ventura in 1992. And uh, now it's a, a, a BMP for stormwater for the public agencies, a best management practice. They, they're required to be stenciled like this so that people know that it drains to the river. Um, but these storm drains deliver uh, a whole variety of pollutants uh, to uh, uh, the river, to, to the watershed. And it's this type of infrastructure. These are the storm drains up in Ojai, where literally what used to be a creek has been turned into a concrete channel. And what happens when you do that is you change the, the way that water acts on the landscape, instead of sinking in, the water is directed off the landscape and flushes off. And this graph right here is called a hydrograph. So you're seeing uh, the flow rate within the creek over time. So the green line here is what it would have been like before it was developed and before those concrete channels were put in. And by putting in those concrete channels and connecting all the roofs to the driveways, to the streets, to the storm drains, to the river or the ocean, downstream you see more water arriving sooner. This is what causes flooding. Flooding is not a natural disaster by any means. <clears throat> and this is the impact. This is the impact downstream from the city of Ojai. You're seeing this on San Antonio Creek. Uh, when you, anytime you see a cliff, you see erosion, active erosion, like we do on our beaches. Um, that's the sign that things are changing pretty quickly. If you just left this over time with no uh, action, it would, it would slowly flatten itself out. But this is the result of, uh, largely from the storms in 2005. You can see here the way that the natural channel changes over time, urbanizing, advanced urbanization and then that urban quasi-equilibrium over time. We got algae, we got houses, we got, you know, there's issues within the Ventura River. This is, a, this is an aerial view. This is the uh, Santa Ana Bridge up in, in uh, Oakview. And uh, you can see here the Ventura River comes down and has to get through between the bridge there. All of this used to be floodplain. All of this used to be part of this. This is the 100-year uh, water where the 100-year flood would go over the land. So by developing this, building a levee, you've constricted the river, prevented it from going over there. Now you've created like a, a, a hose, a jet, that starts jetting downstream. And 
Um, this levy failed in 2005. It took, uh, took a lot of uh, fossil fuels to get out there and try and uh, protect property and, and rebuild this levy. And the result of this over time is that you haven't allowed the natural progression of the plants, the riparian plants within that riparian zone. The sycamores that used to be here providing shade that prevented the evaporation and loss of water are all gone now because every time it rains, we're out there with bulldozers. I have a blog that I'm sure many of you have seen, uh, venturariver.org. And uh, there's a kind of a neat thing on, on, on the internet that you can get called Wordle. So you can do a Wordle on a website and it kind of grabs all the keywords and puts them all together. And, and you can see here that if you do a Wordle on, on my web page here, water tends to be the overarching uh, theme. You know, we're talking about water, the water cycle. I think that, um, you know, most of you are familiar with this, uh, but we've altered the water cycle in the ways that I've illustrated. EBM is really more a concept of looking at the whole. The first step in moving towards this sort of integrated management paradigm is defining the problem. Here's our cycle of insanity. This is what we have today. It doesn't have to be like that something that we can all point to that that's where we want to go. This is where we want to be. This is the kind of thing that uh, takes a little bit of out-of-the-box thinking. We've got to go back and change the way that we've been doing things for the last hundred years because that's how we got into this mess. We need to develop these actionable solutions, small things that we can do on various scales that will begin to work towards that vision. And if we have that common vision and begin to put in place small actions, they'll all add up. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to explain to you real briefly what I've been up to here in Ventura and what the Land Conservancy is doing as part of this. Um, first of all, I got involved with this Surface Point uh, project back in 1994. This is what we were looking at back in the early 90s. This bike path that was built right on the edge um, on artificial fill, they plowed the dunes over and built a bike path. And um, this is part of that 90% of California wetlands you've heard that are, is gone. Uh, the fairgrounds used to be a wetlands at the mouth of the Ventura River, part of that Ventura River estuary. And this is what they do with all that water that piles up in there. They bazooka it onto the beach every time it rains. Um, <clears throat> So we were faced with the specter of a seawall being constructed the entire length of Surface Point all the way from the, from the existing seawall to the river mouth and, and came up with this alternative of managed retreat. And that managed retreat plan got finalized in the early 2000s. And um, now here we are almost 20 years later. This is phase one that's been going on out there today. And um, you know, it was, <laughs> Obviously, it was a big day for me to go out there and see them actually removing the concrete barriers that had been there for 18 years. Um, but I've been out there taking pictures like this. You can see the parking lot's gone. The, um, here we are excavating uh, down. All the artificial fill is gone. They imported thousands of tons of, of cobble from Santa Paula Creek. This is creating a cobble berm on the back shore. I think when people saw this, they were wondering, what is going on? They're digging a hole and filling it with rock. And then the sand started coming in. So uh, the trucks came in and started importing sand. And little by little, that got covered over. Actually, once they got moving, the sand came fast. And it got covered fast. And um, this is kind of what it looks like out there today. Uh, the, that flat sand will ultimately be um, constructed uh, with dunes, and uh, the bike path has moved back to, uh, a little bit more than 60 feet from the water's edge. Remember, this is just phase one. We don't have the money for the dunes. We don't have the money for the, the LID parking lot that would be uh, built on the fairgrounds property. Uh, we don't have the money for, to remove the rest of the parking lot either. So there's still a lot of work to be done out there. Matillaha Dam, you know, it was interesting as, uh, 
as an ocean engineer, I started doing the research and figuring out why do we have this erosion problem? Well, apart from the fact that we built too close, uh, it was also constructed right at the end of uh, a long extended drought at the end of the 80s, and uh, the shoreline was retreating. And uh, I found out that, lo and behold, there was an old obsolete dam that was built in 1948, Matillaha Dam. Looks something like this up there today when it rains. Um, that had accumulated about six million cubic yards of sediment. And this is sand, gravel, and cobble that was all destined for the beaches down here in Ventura um, that has accumulated over 50 years, 60 years now. Uh, through a long involved process, we came up with a plan to remove the dam. And this, in general, is, is the idea that we, this is the dam is down here on the bottom right and we would recreate, excavate the creek back up through the sediments, move the sediment off to the sides, um, and recreate a natural uh, waterway down through Matillaha Canyon that would then allow that sediment to flow downstream and the fish, the endangered steelhead, to swim back upstream. Um, I think this is, this is what it looked like uh, a decade ago. You can see there's not much of a lake that's very shallow back there, but this is, this is our vision for the future. This is, this is the idea of recreating that free-flowing river through Matillaha Canyon. You can see the tremendous energy. That's about 7,000 cubic feet per second coming over the dam, which has a tremendous capacity to move that sediment out. And everybody keeps saying, why don't you just notch it, just notch it. And so uh, we actually have a plan now. The county is going to start looking at being able to notch it down to the sediment line. So at the very least, we don't accumulate more sediment back up behind there before we get forward with the, the, the dam removal plan. This issue of non-point source pollution, the urban areas that, that flush into uh, our coastal zone. Um, this was actually an industrial facility that was discharging into the storm drain. Uh, and these storm drains connect throughout our community here in Midtown, uh, come out at San Juan. You know, the idea that there are opportunities within that urban watershed to come back in and begin to retrofit that storm drain uh, system so that you could begin to capture and store some of that water rather than flushing it out to the ocean every time it rains. I, it's kind of ironic. We have these um, grassy areas that we've pumped water out of the river, treated it so that we can drink it, and then we're pouring that on, on large swaths of grass. Um, uh, while when it does rain, we're flushing it straight out into the ocean. And here we've mapped the urban watershed, and we've highlighted areas where, uh, well, the red things are like bad things. That's areas where there's in large impervious areas, and there might be an opportunity to begin to mitigate some of these problems. And, and uh, uh, the blue uh, areas are, are where there are opportunities to, to, to use some of the open space. Um, there's ways to do this in an integrated fashion throughout the, the sub-watershed, the urban area, to tie projects together as something that can end up improving water quality and helping our situation at the coast. Here's a plan to restore the wetland down at San Juan, reestablish a bike path, take out that four-lane highway that's connecting to the two-lane road down here. We don't really need four lanes there. Um, and, and restore the creek that was once there and the wetland. Uh, and then looking at how people can do this on their own properties on a very small scale, and all of that would add up and make it. Part of my thing is I've been work, trying to work on these projects on other people's property. So the Ojai Land Conservancy, the red areas there are areas that they've acquired over the years, and I think there's more since then. This is an old uh, diagram. But they, they own over 3,000 acres in Ojai Valley, all of which, most of which is open to the public for you to go up there and, and experience our watershed. And one of the great projects that they've done that Derek was instrumental in making happen um, is this Ojai Meadows Preserve. And this image doesn't really do it justice, but there was a historic wetland and, and creek through the, a property that had been graded and drained for agriculture. They restored that. If you go up there today, there's red-winged blackbirds. There's uh, uh, all kinds of other uh, Pacific flyway species. I think I spoke with the preserve manager uh, the other day. He said he, there was ibis on the property, right there in the middle of the Ojai Valley. We want to bring that kind of thing down into the lower river. That's what the parkway plan is about. 
It's about trying to get out of the floodway. It's about creating green space and, and, and open space that we can access the river again. You know, this whole problem with the homeless living in the river bottom is largely due to the fact that we've fenced it off. We've put no trespassing signs up. Uh, this is the uh, Hillside Conservancy grand vision for, you know, the trails. But it's all on other people's property. So that's what we need to work on is beginning to acquire these properties. And I cannot emphasize enough the importance of a land conservancy in this larger uh, ecosystem-based management approach to healing and restoring our watershed in order to help uh, heal and restore and protect our, our coast. So that's a sort of a summary of these types of projects. I just call it thinking like a watershed. <clears throat> uh, my blog, VenturaRiver.org. It's every little tiny project in your own backyard, whatever you do. If, you know, if we as a community lead the way, our leaders will follow. I mean, I, I really truly believe that that's, that's the way it has to work. And when we say watershed revolution, that's the revolution we're talking about, is really the revolution in understanding uh, how we all fit into the system and doing our part on our own property and doing our part with these community organizations. Uh, maybe there's ways that, that we can uh, convert old industrial sites into something that uh, wouldn't be constantly leaching pollution into the river and would provide open space and, and recreation. So I think there's a world of opportunities out there. I think we're just overwhelmed because we're dealing with this whole ecosystem-based management. That's why I say one project at a time. Um, and if, uh, you know, it's taken 20 years for this surface point thing. So I'm just saying if you're committed and you got a good idea, you can make it happen. But you got to stick, you got to be in there for the long haul. It's really important because we all live downstream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.